So just an overview for today, we're going to uh, do a brief introduction and overview of Open Data NYC. Um, we're going to talk about filtering data and visualizing the data. Then I'd love to show you some tools that use Open Data, and then we'll have some time for Q&A and you know, how to stay involved. So, um, you know, today what we really are hoping for is that you have an improved understanding of what open data is and why it's important and a little bit of how to use it. It's, so this curriculum has been created, uh, was co-created by the Office of Data Analytics at NYC, the Office of Technology and Innovation, and the Civic Technology Organization of Beta NYC. So a brief history of NYC open data. Uh, the definition of data is going to be quite simple. It's data accessible to the public because of its connection to data. Often it's considered a 21st century initiative or phenomenon, uh, but really it's of growing importance to data in our everyday lives and stems from an increased creation and use of data by governments, both in New York and around the world. In fact, there's a long history of similar efforts to make government more accountable and transparent. So to better understand how we got here, let's briefly touch on the, um, the some of the developments and how we came to this today. So before we go into the past, um, I love this slide because it really just is a snapshot of everything that the data that's coming and going all around you. Um, everything that you know just as this sample this is a shot of an intersection in union square um but everything from the department of transportation recording when they pave the streets to how often the public recycling bins are issued and their location this is all uh open data the types of complaints um captured by the department of buildings about specific buildings all of this is is being accounted for and ensures that the city is running so just as a follow-up question, did you, if, if any of you checked the weather today, that's that's an example of open data. Um, most of us have used open data without even knowing. Yes, exactly. And mapping out everything um, in our daily lives. GPS, that's essentially data captured by satellites in the United States, um, all part of the uh, of our government systems. So all of this started back in 1873 um, when the Progressive Era reforms, uh, we started the, the city record. This is the root of the open data movement. New York City, the Progressive Reforms took the form of this new publication. And we'll, oh, looks like we have one more person coming in. So you can think back to uh, the corruption of Boss Tweed. Um, he was a, um, he had so much land and so much government control that um, it was believed that really we needed to have more accountability for the government and these types of, the, the city record started to become published where everyone could see the central repository of information about the city, public notices, purchases, and hiring. The Citizens Union supported the Seth Lowe for mayor, who, after he was elected in 1902, helped create the civil service system. So there's a long history of um, citizens' uh, activism and promoting the government data. So okay. fast forward to the 1960s and 70s, the freedom of information laws were passed around the country, where this type of information was available upon request. Uh, what's important to note here is that this information was still not yet available by default. Um, you had to ask for it and you had to know what you were asking for. So, you know, if you think about that, this was the FOIL and FOIA were, um, were, you know, revolutionary at the time. But if we think about it now, you know, that sounds like, no, uh, we need to know, we, we should be able to get to it on, on our own accord and when we need it. And it's our own understanding of why we need it. Absolutely. And um, I would like to add in that slide, you just passed by Vanessa, yeah. um, the one right before. Um, yeah. yeah, so it was a, a pretty novel measure 
that came up in the uh, late 1960s. And what you're looking at here is actually that someone that filed a FOIL request, still a valid way of filing with New York City mm -hmm. to get access to data. This is actually someone looking into the uh, FBI's investigation into Martin Luther King and his assassination. So wow. the, the, yeah. the rights that we now have to be able to ask our government uh, for certain information, it's, it's uh, it was definitely a novel thing at its time, and it's still very powerful to this day. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I always, looking at this slide, I'm always marveled at the the number of hands that this passed through, and the amount of markations and date stamps that went through this on this document. You know. It, yep. And you can still request it. <laughs> yeah. So, moving ahead to in 1993, several decades later. Um, NYC released the public data directory. This made a subset of the information available through FOIL, information stored as data, more accessible by providing a list of what data agencies have. This is in contrast with a FOIL request where the person making the request generally needs to know in advance. So now we have a sense of what agencies are reporting and a description of what their data sets contained. Interestingly, some of these systems and data bases outlined in this directory actually still exist today. So you can see the Department of Corrections, Department of Employment, Environmental Protection. Uh, these are all uh, contributing uh, data ag agencies that are contributing data today. Yep. And then so the difference and we're, that we're also bringing out here, thanks, Vanessa, is like mm -hmm. FOIL, you had to know what you were looking for. But with this attempt that we made uh, in early in the early 90s, we tried to give a list. New York City tried to give a list of what agencies actually had. You were able to download it. Um, I think it was printed or PDF. You were able to look at it and see what agencies potentially had as a list. And um, yeah, that um, you see that there's a enlarged photo for the Department of Buildings. That BIS system is very much still in operation. So you can mm -hmm. see go back to 19, 1989. We still have BIS data on the open data portal today yeah. about building information. Yeah, and it's amazing. Now you, you key in that BIS number and the, you'll see later an entire list populates and every facet you could want to know about a building is there. So here we are in 2012. NYC open data is now uh, law. Advocates, city staff, and elected officials came together to celebrate the passage of New York City's open data law. While many cities have open data and policy as an executive, as a policy or executive order, New York City's law guarantees that the public will have access uh, to this information in perpetuity and regardless of administration. Uh, a key difference between open data and FOIL is that no one needs to ask for this information. Again, it is made public by default shared with everyone, uh, not only and, and in a usable format, that's also very important. So let's see, uh, just to point out, you know, along the way, there have been multiple laws passed about Open Data NYC. So the first was Local Law 11 in 2012, and each law amends the NYC Administrative Code, collecting a collection of laws governing NYC government. Open data um, is a part of Title 23, Communications Chapter 5. If you want to understand the current rules of, oops, sorry, of city government and, and read the administrative code, laws change language and pass laws um, in consolidated text. Uh, just to, as a quick side note, I've with this basic premise, I've been able to jump to governments around uh, Puerto Rico, France, and just with a basic understanding of data NYC, I've been able to navigate the systems in these other governments on an international level. And so it's, it's really, it's very helpful. So as of 2022, NYC Open Data contains more than 3000 data sets and billions of rows of data uh, managed by NYC Open Data team housed at the New York City Office of Technology and Innovation. This wealth of information is only possible thanks to the network of about 100 data, open data coordinators spread across the city government. 
every agent, city agency, office, or commission, including elected officials, has an open data coordinator. These open data coordinators are well versed in the city agency's data, responsible for working with NYC open data team to identify, structure, document, publish, update, and share the agency's open data data sets. So let's look at an overview of NYC open data. So this is the web page that will look like when you navigate to nyc.gov slash open data. Very straightforward. Um, and you can you can jump right in to the data or you can kind of scroll your way down. So I'll just jump over to an open data page just to give you an idea. So as you can see here, you can you can just put in a search term and get a whole list of data sets from any layer. But then there's, you know, it's it's organized in different ways. Uh, you know, most logical. The types of agencies, if if you know you want to work with the buildings department, the health department, see what they're working through, the different library bur by boroughs, they have a uh, catalog of data sets as well. Categories, if you're looking at it from a uh, business standpoint, education, housing, planning, data sets that are recently and things that are perhaps most popular. So, you know, just to get a sense, if you wanted to dive right in, you could just plunk in a search term. Uh, you can click on the data tab at the top, or you can start to browse um, and look through the data tab. And oftentimes, like I mentioned before, group by agency, category, most popular, and the newest. So let's look at a specific data set. Um, So I'll go ahead and drop this into the search bar. Oops, sorry guys, let me go back over here. In 311 uh, service requests. This, this database um, includes all of the service requests that come through uh, 311. If you're not familiar, you within the city, you can dial 311, um, navigate, ask for any level of information and also put in a request of any kind, um, you know, concerning the city. If you have an issue with something, put it in through 311 and it will get logged and the agency will be told about it. A, a major dispatch system. Yep. So before we jump in, just to give you a sense, um, there are requests coming in constantly, I think 175 languages and uh, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and across 3,600 government agencies. It is accessible via the phone, web, Skype, Twitter, Facebook, and mobile apps. So um, let's look at the data set, the 311 service request 2010 to the present. I'm going to jump over to my demo page. Yep. If everyone's following along, feel free to click um, and follow along into the 311 data set 2010 to present. It should yeah. be the first okay. one that pops up when you, when you type in 311 into the open data portal. Yeah. And uh, I just I dropped the link in the chat too if anyone wants to take a look. So, yep. okay. So now we have this nice text based page. Um, what are we looking at here? So a little bit about the data set. So it's important to know for currency, uh, you know, when the page is updating, um, you can get a sense of when it started being published, you can get a sense of how frequently uh, the data is updated. You know, sometimes depending on your, your question, uh, there's a level of importance when it comes to how often it's updated, um, you know, 
when it started being collected. So for example, if I'm looking at uh, building footprints, that's not gonna change too frequently. So if I see a, a data set that's only updated annually, um, that's okay. But in this case, uh, 311 service requests are coming in constantly. So it's good to know that um, they're being collected frequently. I mean, it's it, it, the frequency is daily. So um, it, as essential to the data sets are the data dictionaries. So the 311 service request data dictionary, this is a document that basically tells you about the data. This is data about data. Um, in some ways, is everyone uh, familiar with the term metadata? If you get a second, just drop in the chat what you think maybe metadata means. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about what's in the data dictionary. You know, why do we need why do we need data about data anyway? That's a good guess. Yeah. Okay. We got right. uh, yeah, absolutely. When the data when was the data set published? Yeah. Data about the variables. Close, Caroline. Yeah. Close. Yep. <laughs> Underlying yeah, tags, yeah. data related to the issue. Okay, getting closer, most granular level of data you can get. I'm liking these responses. Yeah, yeah. Data, data that describes data. I think we read that at the same time, Vanessa, maybe because <laughs> that is probably the closest. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, absolutely. That, so, yeah, sorry, that is probably the closest here, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's important to know you have all think, look, think about when you think of this massive scale of data that there are 41. So just jumping into the dictionary, you can start to see like, well, why do we really need this? Um, there's so many descriptors that go into there are for every complaint that is logged within the 311 data set, there are 41 columns of data being collected. Now, in the, in the data dictionary, this table explains all of this. And don't let it throw you off that in this first description, the column name, each row here is a column. So things like, what is the status of the complaint? What is the type of complaint? What agency? What is the full name of the agency versus the acronym? You know, someone said to me like, oh, once you work in the city, you know every acronym for every city agency. Well, I have no idea. So I very often need to read both the agency name and the agency. Um, so there's a lot of information here. And also some of these agencies, they have specific um, types of details. So for example, the Department of Aging, have particular problems um, and then there's details for all of those. And so these dictionaries basically take you through how the data is broken up and uh, collected. Hi, uh, Kathy, yes, I understand it is, there is an overview that is, um, that will be different. Everyone kind of gives you a little bit of a different explanation. So, uh, last, just to see in the maintenance of the data dictionaries, uh, it's important to see, you know, if there are major changes, you can see that this dictionary was actually just updated um, earlier this week. So we're on a fresh new data dictionary, and you can get a sense of the um, why it was updated. Um, updated to the 2022 standard data set description and new metadata and information regarding expected values has been added. Yep. Um, for some context, I did this work most recently. Um, so I'm with the open data team. Uh, hey, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was long overdue, but we have a cool table here where you can see the list of almost every agency present in this 301 data set. You can see the problems that that agency specifically deals with. You could see most of the additional details that they'll standardize. It's a really powerful table. I want you guys to have a look at the data dictionary like Vanessa's showing you when you land on an open data set. You wanna download this documentation 
and have a look at it because it could tell you so much about the data before you actually jump in. Mm -hmm. Vanessa, back to you. I think maybe we're at a point where we're ready to see what you want to show us about the data set itself. Sure, absolutely. So let's let's jump into the data. I was having a little bit of glitchy server issues earlier, so I preloaded a few, but we're going to go into the data live and just take a look. So once we want to view the data, I'm going to switch over to the grid view. Yeah, we're also it's working with some features to present the data differently, but you yeah. can always follow what Vanessa did and go to grid view and have it pop up like this. She's going to show you a little bit about filtering and actually show you what 311 looks like as a table. It's yeah. pretty big data set. Yeah. So 32 million rows, that's a lot of records to handle. So right away, I'm going to go in and um, select some filters. And so I'm, I think time is one of the fastest ways to kind of slice and parse down. And it's something that we're you know, you're looking at a study, let's say this year versus last year. So it's, I'm going to start with a creation date of, let's say a very manageable data set. I'm going to go with um, January 1st, 2023. I'm going to say, and then you can also choose um, time-based um, parameters. So the creation date is after January 1st, 2023. So to the present. And then I'm also going to add the filter of a location. So you can see like, okay, so here we are, 539,000 records created What's in this city? year. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a busy city, right? And so, and then I'm going to add an additional filter. Um, so, you know, Sometimes people want, really want to know about their neighborhood and they'll go all the way to their community board. Um, if you don't know your community board, I can share also um, a platform called BoardStat where you can learn um, some ready-made tools about your community, get a profile. Okay, I'm going to go over to one of my preloaded backup platforms oh, from earlier. Okay, so just to go over the visualization, I preloaded this filter. This is July, um, 2022. Uh, this is in the summer in community board 12. And so you can see here these, now we're looking at complaint types and these are the top 10 complaint types. And so you can see very quickly in the heat of summer, Everyone's outside. Um, noise and street on the street and sidewalk are, by and large, the over almost two thousand complaints. And so you can see that um, the complaints are, you know, that it's the lead. I was able to filter down, and I can see the complaint type. So, but let's, in contrast, let's look at the date. If we were to look at um, March. We're going to see that there's a big difference. March 1st through the 11th. Um, oh, also, sorry. try, try to pick yeah. maybe the 10th, um, as the, the data does take a while to load it, and today's may not be um, fully processed yet. Yeah. Just pick a, a day's buffer uh, from today just to be safe. So if you want to. Probably the latest we have is yesterday's data. So like, yeah. the okay. so we'll do that March first, and we'll even we'll just choose March. Okay. We'll yeah. use March. Oh, yeah, and here you could drop down a few things, right? You could uh, click again. Yeah. Yep. One more time. Uh, so a couple of things in your way, right? All right. So this is fine. We could. Uh, do you want twenty twenty? Two or you want to update? Right, it? so we'll grab twenty twenty three. Well, yeah, twenty twenty two is it sounds proper for we'll, yeah. for last year, and then the next date, um, when we move over, yep, we can use that calendar once more. Let's choose um, first the month by moving from July. Mm -hmm. Let's choose March. See if we could do that. 
Yeah, it's there's something going on. It keeps resetting. So I then changing the year first. It's probably just a little logic based for that. Yep. And then um, let's use Friday instead of today. Friday. Yep. Just the okay. tenth or the ninth. Yeah. Either one would be fine. And we'll hit apply. Oh. Yeah, that one. Um, I think it it makes you choose twice. It's a little bit uh buggy, but um, you want to see? Maybe you could see if you could hard code that one in. Yeah. What's the problem is that I'm having, we're just gonna, here we go. Okay, so we're looking at in March, the inverse is happening, right? So even, I know we're just looking at two days in March, but the depths of winter versus the depths of summer. Now our analysis, we can very quickly see that heat and hot water are by and far, by and large, the, um, the prominent, complaint type and noise is less is cut less than that. everyone's inside there's no noise outside there's no residential noise but heat and hot water so you can see how you're quickly really um the number of you can really get a picture of what's happening in the city um based on this one data set you're, you're getting essentially a pulse of the city so just getting back to the slides um let me just see what else we, we want to cover as far as this data set. Okay, so you know, we talked about how to read the data set. Um, we, you know, we asked ourselves, is, is this what we're looking for? We talked about the data dictionary. And you know, questions to ask yourself, you know, was the data set current? You know, you can see we're really learning by doing. Do I understand the data set well enough to start using it and making sure it's not too large? Yep. We talked about filtering. Right. And so we were able to visualize the data. Oh, Anna, yes, I appreciate what you're saying. The hurdles of, of demoing. Yes, I understand. So, um, you know, one of the other charts to really look at is the pie chart. Uh, I, I've have heard debates about the pie chart, how it's just, it can be so deceiving and how, you know, so the, the data selection tool really gives you the opportunity to um, select the dimension of your data, um, how are you measuring the data, right? So the measurement is always something that's going to change. Um, and then also you can slice the data up so that you can paint a convincing picture of what the data is telling you. Maybe you really only wanna talk about the top five issues. You can break down the pie chart by five issues. Um, you, can, you can break this down to 20 slices. It, you know, there's really a lot that right here within this. So you can see here the complaint types are, are broken down by borough. And you can specify the number of slices, like I mentioned. So the pie chart that we've chosen, in this, in this visualization, you can see it's 311 requests broken down by borough um and just on one day and so you can see for example in this visualization overwhelmingly brooklyn and queens had the most activity followed up by manhattan and the bronx there are also data sets that you can map um within uh within open data um i'm not going to um, preload any maps today because it just you're not going to it's, it's just going to stall too much. Um, but this is also very, very useful where you can break them down by, uh, you can filter by the district, the borough. Um, you can also pull these data sets out. And so anytime um, you can optimize the data set, basically the, the visualization tool is going to give you a clue as to the best way to visualize the data set. They're going to anything that's the data set includes, let's say, place names. 
it will include a, a green highlight. And those are the those are the types of charts you can use to visualize the data set. In this case, the data 311 thankfully comes with Latin long, right? And um, that's why the portal would recommend which kind of map you could use. Yeah, absolutely. So on a single day, you can see they're spread across the, the city. And there's, there's even tools within here where you can cluster them by concentration. Um, you can aggregate the points um, where you can visualize like a, almost like a heat map. So again, here's a bar chart of, by complaint type and by the count, basically the count of instances shows the length across the bar. Yep. So tools that use open data. So this is a whole other chapter. We basically just went through and visited the back end, but there's number of tools um, across the different agencies that have been produced across some of the different agencies. They combine and they pull different data sets from all over to produce these uh, sophisticated tools for analyzing the city and solving problems. One of the most popular is the population fact finder. Um, this data set, you, this program uses the US Centennial and the American Community Survey. Uh, as you know, the census is every 10 years, but the ACS is every five years. And then estimates in one of three years are typically built um, in between. Uh, another very popular tool is Zola, the um, planning board's uh, zoning maps. So the public data set includes, it's built and maintained by the Department of City Planning. You can see um, some of the other project galleries are uh, the Content Explorer, uh, Restaurant Violations. Um, some more of my favorites. Let me see if I wanted to show. Oh, yes, of course, Building Footprints, um, NYC Hotspots. Oh, sorry, guys. I wanted to, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I wanted to show you the community profiles. Um, this tool is fantastic because, you know, we went through all those individual data sets with it, all the different profiles within 311. Um, if you wanted to paint a picture of a particular community district uh, right away, um, the community district profiles is a great tool for, um, they slice and dice all these different data sets. Um, and by, let's say you can look at the population, um, this pyramid, a breakdown of uh, race and, and origins, the rent burden, and then also where this falls relative to the rest of the city. And then you can see here's the land use and zoning. You can see the different facilities across the city. What's there are 46 public schools, nine public libraries. And then also just to just to tie this back to open data, this resources page at the bottom, this tells you all the different data sets that were used to build this profile. And then um, even individually. So you could download them and then start to build your own um, analysis with the tools. Everything from the base map to the census tracts, um, tabular data, uh, lat long geographic data, uh, the boundaries map. This is another tool that I mentioned earlier. So if you wanted to see all the different overlapping boundaries, uh, municipal, fire districts, think, um, political boundaries, uh, police precincts, all of that can be viewed within the boundaries map. Let's see, how are we doing on time? Let me open this and take a look. If anyone wants me to query a particular boundary, I could do that. Be a good chance if anyone wants to drop in a ask about a particular neighborhood. In the meantime, I'm going to drop in, let's say 1855. Actually, I'm not gonna, there it goes. 
I'm going to switch keyboards quickly. This keyboard decided to stop working. <laughs> no worries. And um, the there we go. Ah, okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's try. Um, let's enter. <sighs> Let's see, um, let's say, it's funny, the one on this keyboard doesn't wanna work. Okay, let's just say 525 West 26th Street. Okay, so I can quickly see, this happens to be, I used to work here, it's in Congestional District 12, Health District 15, Sanitation District, it's part of the um, Hudson Yards, Chelsea, the neighborhood tabulation area. So all of this, you can see all of this broken down together. So that's um, the boundaries map. Yeah, that's that pretty cool. Oh, sorry. Yes, Kay. No, I was gonna say that's pretty cool. Like, uh, I'm gonna drop that for everyone. So. I think it's important. Um, a lot of a lot of the ways that public data is made available and accessible to you all. Open data is a great resource for that, but it's also important for you to know more about the areas that are relevant to you. So I, I'll go ahead and drop it in in the chat. Um, yes, there are neighborhood names on that application as well. So no no worries about it, Vanessa. I'll go ahead and drop it for everyone. Okay. Great. Thank you. So I, I just I also wanted to point out um, two additional tools: um, Data to Go NYC and Data Health to Go NYC. So Data to Go NYC again, we'll just we'll jump in here, and you can start to see all the different indicators building out um, from within the map. So let's say, for example. You can use um, the human and all of these different indexes and um, data uh, platforms, data profiles are basically built into this, into this portal and then you can view them across the map. So for example, public funding and services, library circulation. Now this is an interesting one for me. Um, you can see there's a density of circulation across, um, let's see, by community district. So oh, oh, very sensitive Zoom function. But you can see over in Flushing and Mary Hill, um, library circulation, 1.9 million items. So that's a, there's a lot of readership in uh, this community district. Uh, then we can look over in community district eight, Briarwood, uh, it just falls off just slightly. So it's, Look at that, three clicks in and I could see library circulation. So data to go, this is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, Kathy, you had a question. Community districts have such odd configurations. District eight includes part of Queens as the information in a particular area as in Yorkville. Oh, great question. So um, neighborhood versus um, community district boundaries. Yeah, so there's, um, the, um, I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to point to the um, question uh, platform and then, Kay, if there's anything that you want to add to that, um, uh, please let me know. But I just want to point out that, just want to jump ahead to for something for you to look for. On the open data page, there is a um, there's a question and answer portal, so you can send everyone a note. This this goes to a live person, and they will help you navigate the data. Um, so another layer of support, really important. Yeah, do you, do you mind while you're on that slide just dropping that link into the chat? Absolutely. I'm getting questions that I never actually thought about, or at least if I would have an answer, the answer is probably different. Kathleen, to your point. And your question about community districts versus like area names, I do know that we had our latest census um, data. You were just there on the on the presentation deck, uh, Vanessa, just 
drop that link in one time at the bottom. If you scroll down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so um, our support times for, that my team manages, Monday through Friday, normal city working hours, uh, nine to five. If we uh, don't happen to get to your inquiry, uh, we will uh, be back in <laughs> when present to address it. Uh, we normally do the work, especially if it's regarding open data sets, trying to route your question to the exact agency that would deal with that data set or um, city business. And then from there, once we identify agency, you get a, we try to get you an answer within two weeks max. Um, so that that's our SLA as well. And thanks, Vanessa, for dropping that in. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Reach out there. Ask us um, these questions. It's really good, and it's important to ask us ask us questions. You know, as data changes, as uh, the city is doing more work to remap things and remap boundaries, uh, the answers may change. So you know, we have to help each other uh, stay as refreshed as possible. So thank you all. Yeah, Cynthia. So to your question, I think he answered that, you know, really, like you said, the working day and then the turnaround within two weeks. So that's great. Yeah. Back to you, uh, Vanessa. Feel free to kick off where you where you last were. I think you were showing off some of the tools or close to yes. finishing with that. Yep. Yep. So I went over, um, oh, did I? Yes. We, we looked at the boundaries map. Yeah. Um, we looked at the community, community district profile. Um, I also, I wanted to point out that, um, you know, that we are in open data week. This today is really the kickoff day of open data week. And there are tons of programs or different interests that I, I never would have thought about. So a few that I'm particularly interested in um, that I've signed up for, um, Women Remembers. I'm going to drop this in, in and share it out with you all. Just get, so women remember celebrating Women's History Month through open data. And then um, another one in particular, and I'll drop this in the chat too. Um, are um, the NYC agency maps, tools and geospatial for 2023. And so these are hosted by different agencies. This one in particular is hosted by emergency management, uh, city planning and transportation. So it's interesting to see all these agencies working together to really, again, make the data more accessible, make the um, city infrastructure understandable through data more accessible. Um, and then also data by design uh, is an ongoing series of exhibits, both in-person and virtual that um, really um, bring the data to life. Yep. So I'm excited to see those as well. So feel free, uh, folks, to use that link and um, sign up and register. Um, it'll definitely be a part of the takeaway from today's class as well, if you didn't get it. So I uh, will make sure you have that. Yeah. So I've been going on quite a bit, but if, if there are general questions from the group, um, I'd love to hear them. Do yeah. Best um, to them. Let's take us, take us back to that slide so we could just see and maybe we could... Uh, Um, I think it's uh, maybe is this are we at Q&A yet? Just just checking. Um, a few slides over. Otherwise, I would like to talk through some of these slides if you could help sure. me. With that. Yeah. Okay. And one more again. Ah, okay. Yes. yes. So questions come up first. So yeah, before we we part or with anything like that. I uh, just want to check with the crowd. Are, are there any questions that we could probably um, provide some clarification for? Feel free to drop it in the chat. Right now is the time for Q&A, and I'm, I'm here to help as well. Um, so from Kathleen, we have, we have a question. She's trying to find out how steep a street was between two avenues. We could not find out, but um, did find a way for trees, although I'm not sure how. Oh, a map on trees, although, yes. Yeah, so one thing for sure is we do have uh, a current 
map tree census on open data with approximate Latin longs. Uh, it actually had folks walking around the city. It had folks walking around the city and actually cataloging trees methodically. Um, so we have that data on the portal. And um, I, I could try to give it a quick look and drop that for you in the chat. As far as the steepness between two avenues. So I, I want to say that uh, I'm thinking of change in elevation. Yes. And so, um, you know, uh, seeing the topography map for New York City, um, that should give us that change in elevation. And um, I would have to look and see what the data says, but I think keywords like topography, um, and then there may be like one meter, three meter, uh, 10 meter, one meter, you know, that's, yeah. that, that should bring us to that answer. Um, it, it, it would depend on the, as, as you say, like the resolution. To that fine of a detail, it sounds like something that maybe city planning would have yeah. best. I see them doing some work like that with their lasers out on the yeah. street. So I think that's, a, that's, this is where it's a great opportunity for you to reach out to us Again, in this link, ask open data. I'm going to, have, going to go ahead and drop it one more time because um, it's the best way for us to keep a log of the questions that you guys have and then be able to route it to the appropriate agency. And I'm thinking that's going to go straight to DCP. And I, I'm really interested in that as well because I do see them doing that work. Okay. Yeah. And actually, um, just a little crowd thinking here. Um, Kate points out DSNY maintains a list of the steepest roads in the city for snow plowing purposes. So oh. it may not give the change of the road that you're looking for, but uh, a ranking of um, from Department of Sanitation. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, and it's interesting how that information gets shared around, right? DSNY has its own um, purposes for knowing the steepness to protect their vehicles but more than likely they'll probably get that from DCP who uh, takes the legit measurements of, of those kind of elevation differences. Yeah, yeah. And okay, uh, maybe this is an opportunity. I just, I was, I took a gander to say, I, I, I put in the keyword elevation. So one foot digital elevation model, let me just move this over. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And this is, and it actually identifies that it, it points, it, clicks out to an external link. And so, yeah, okay, here we go. So yeah, it's a, it's a raster, it's a big data set. So Ooh, in, this, in this case, Kate, I'm thinking like we also kind of need it. We don't necessarily need this data set, but we need a visualizer that uses a data set like this. Right, right. Um, and um, could, could you start by at least letting us know who, who manages this? Yes. So this this is. I just looked at it actually. Wait. I think it's right there. Data provided by the Office of Technology. Oh, thank you. And innovation, and innovation. right? Okay, innovation. so that's my office. <laughs> there might be a team in my big office that mm -hmm. people are publishing, and they know a lot about what this is and know the best program to look at it. As you can thank see you. here, you can see the raster in the small little thumbnail. And um, yeah. I'm sure the color is indicating steepness there. I would not recommend someone goes ahead and just download this outright. We are warning you here. There's a smaller file that comes out to three gigabytes, but also the larger full resolution one comes out to 121 gigabytes. So that's pretty yeah. large. Um, yeah, here's yeah. the GitHub and site as well. Um, were you, were you, you wanted to say something about this, Vanessa? Yeah, I was just going to point out that this is the, the dictionary about this. Um, it's hosted uh, on GitHub and it just, it gives you an overall, you can see the scope of it, um, specifications and, and data quality. So just wanted to point out, you know, just moving around this data set a little bit. And, and Kate um, also recommends, Kate is from Beta NYC, the Civic Tech Group. That helps us out um, open data program as well as help us put oh. together open data week. Thanks, Kate, yeah. for joining. She mentioned yeah. uh, uh, that you could check out FloodNet and yeah. maybe they can have some information about elevation data as well. Right. That's Thank right. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Oh, 
Great question. Um, it's okay, I don't want to mangle this explanation. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about the difference between where things are held on GitHub as opposed to a tabular. Yeah. So if maybe you could help me with a little bit of visualization, can we head over to the portal real quick, just so I can understand, explain the difference for the crowd? Yeah. So the open data portal, and if you could scroll up just a bit, you could go home uh, or to data. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. You can head over to data. Mm -hmm. um, so this is our repository, right? And we keep uh, data in a few forms of format. Usually everything is gonna be uh, a table, CSV, meaning that a computer could read it really easy. Uh, we may have some zip files, as you may have saw. And in very few circumstances, we link to other websites like you just saw Kathleen, to that website GitHub, which is another repository that uh, other data enthusiasts use and coders use to uh, host their projects and share mm -hmm. with other people. So yeah, GitHub is another place, but um, that is a place that's wide open for anyone's use and is not guaranteed to just have city data. Open data, the portal that we're showing you now, uh, is where you're guaranteed to have city produced data. Right. So that's the difference between the two websites. GitHub is almost like the wild west. There's all kinds of, it's, it's open, as open you can get. Helpful stuff, but all sorts of stuff. It's spelled GitHub. If you ever wanted to take a look at it, Kathleen, uh, thanks, oh, Tom, thanks for, Tom, for sending that through. But um, not to get lost there right now, um, you know, definitely wanting to explain a key difference that whenever you visit the open data portal online, you're guaranteed to be dealing with city produced data. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so as we wind down, I also, I wanna share, um, if there are any additional questions. Oh, thanks, yeah. Kathy. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear you. you're learning something yeah. new. Like I, I said, I promise something new. New perspectives. Ah, so she's asking about ambassadors. <laughs> are they paid city employees or volunteers? Great question. So, um, yeah. Yeah, ambassadors are volunteers. Uh, we have people from all walks of life. People working with some of the biggest tech companies, uh, librarian specialists. Vanessa is an ambassador herself, and we're doing this. Um, from, from volunteer work and for our love of working with data and promoting data literacy across the city so we can help our folks like you all. And I love to see um, enthusiasm like from Kathleen and we're all learning things right on the spot. So yeah, we're all volunteers from all different walks of life. Some are city workers and some are people working in the private sector as well. Yeah. And um, if you follow us through our Open Data Week, there will be an opportunity towards the tail end in School of Data. And we'll also probably probably just be emailing you as well with an opportunity to become an ambassador. We are looking for other people who are also uh, excited about becoming an ambassador. And we're looking to develop curriculum and show some more advanced topics as well in the future. Yeah, I just, I, without going into the millions of reasons, I just find that as an ambassador, I've been able to learn so much, but also, it's in a way that's approachable and I can pass it on to people very easily. So this curriculum and representation as an open data ambassador has really um, improved my immediate audience and then the larger audience about um, open data. So I highly recommend the program. Um, um, okay. We, we yes. don't need to rush yet. We, got, uh, we, have, we do have a good chunk of time. Um, so, and I do see some different questions in the chat. Um, I could let yeah. you know. Um, as we're getting closer to having the bump forward. Is that all right? Sure, yeah. Hey, um, so I'm just Nick, scrolling back through, yeah. Yeah, you can stay here. Nick Nick mentioned um, he's building tools, web applications with open data. Uh, Nick, um, great opportunity for that kind of work. Um, it's, it's actually in this slide deck as well. Vanessa, how about we just jump back a few slides? Let's let's just do it uh, ad hoc. When we land on it, okay. I want to mix something. Uh, so this is an example of something someone built that right. ended up getting into our slide deck. But let's keep going back real quick. 
Mm -hmm. More, a bit more. Uh, once more. Just one more time. Oh yeah, this is a great example of something someone built that became an official asset. Um, is there a, a slide for the projects uh, tools yeah. that you opened, right. but specifically the project gallery? Can we drop that link in there? Sure. Let's drop the project gallery link in the chat for folks like Nick who work, who actually work with the data and do cool things. Feel free to drop it for him because uh, you there's actually a time in the year where we actually collect submissions of the work and there have been actually key pieces of projects that's been looped into actual city government. Um, you can think of the, uh, the council, the new council member, uh, council members website. Um, I saw yeah. it while it was in beta as part of a presentation before it became officially adopted. So that's definitely one as well. Um, yes, yeah, so there is opportunity to gain some traction if you're building cool things with open data. Uh, so that's where I would send it to you. Yep, and um, just keep a lookout for that. Follow us. We'll let you know when the time is open to be submitting. Um, this, this check this out. This entire gallery um, is folks that have done work with open data and built. So you can see what's already out there and see how different it is from some of your ideas that you're thinking about as well. Yeah, and I mean, I, I come back here as often as I can recall, and it's every time there's something new. Um, cool projects in different audiences, community power, civic advocacy, so, academia. Yep, and I'm just gonna keep going through as I see, I think, I think now that we're chatting like normal, there's a lot of cool questions coming in, so I don't want to miss anyone's. Uh, so, no. um, to uh, Jay Bisa, um, we work with the Department of Education in general. Um, my office does not work with a particular school, but we, um, the DOE does publish um, open data with uh, our program as oh. well, and they are required to have a coordinator. I'm not sure if you had a specific idea, but feel free to keep chiming in. As for Lori, you asked um, which of these week's sessions will be made available later. So um, early in the chat was provided some of the sessions you could register for. So you could keep looking ahead of time to see other things that you'd be interested in. Like I think um, Vanessa sent over one she's really interested in. Um, all of our sessions will be recorded, even this one. And the way it will be made available later um, a link will be provided to where you can browse through and have a look at any recorded session for your reference. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Laurie, I appreciate what you're adding about the Sunshine Week celebration. Aims to promote open government and shine the light into dark recesses of government secrecy. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. And that's kind of what this program stands for. You know, we were doing the good work of trying to make city data available but yes, um, it, it's great when everyone is aware and they know how to access it. Um, this is how things get done and things come out into the light and work for our, our greater good. Oh, Kenny, I, you're, you're doing a great job, um, tech, tech challenge, because like I mentioned, everything's changing all the time. So every day sometimes feels like the first day. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, so, um, okay. I would say keep, trying to check in with one-on-one classes. Um, it, it creates an opportunity to keep practicing. Um, we'll keep in mind, if, especially if you're seeing folks again and again, slow it down and um, we'll have different presenters uh, that, that you can check in with and you can ask more specific questions. You'll see your questions get more and more specific and you can ask us to slow it down at any other point as well. So that's, we're here to help and we hope that you know you, you don't give up on us and keep, trying to learn more with this as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right, absolutely. so I don't see any okay. other questions. Oh. Yet. Are there any? says, yeah, any other resources from this morning's water monitoring session? It was so full I couldn't attend, but it seemed really cool. Oh, I, you know, if I'm not mistaken, I actually thought water monitoring was maybe running, another one is running. Maybe, if maybe. that's true, that sounds very exciting. I don't know if you could check on that. 
Um, I saw, yeah, I saw some of the water monitoring last year and it was amazing. Yeah, it looks it so great. It's like out in nature. Um, one of my coworkers were just there this morning taking pictures. There was wildlife out there. There was actual like tools, equipment. You actually got a city agency showing you equipment to measure uh, um, water levels. So yeah, there's another one later in the week. Uh, they are not virtual yes they are in person they are in person for sure i saw pictures of people walking around i don't think there's going to oh, okay. be a hi yeah last year i attended one that was virtual so i guess maybe they changed the format because maybe could. things are getting a bit more relaxed with getting people around yeah i'm just filtering the list really quickly open office hours uh, so you can filter the list of program. Let me put this over here. Of uh, programming by, you know, forum. Kathleen, I, I will take a note of that. I will take a note of that. Thank you so much. If there's someone who can get enough of a crowd around so we can run through this, I think that's a perfect opportunity. I will let my team know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's a great idea. Okay, so here, I'll drop this in the chat. This was virtual only. Um, yep, and there was a presentation virtual. about. Okay, thanks, Kate. And yes, and I'll, and I'll just read it out for, for everyone's um, ears and listening. Thank you, Kate, so much. Uh, she's saying um, just a quick overview about Open Data Week. From March 11th to 18th, um, all this week upcoming, um, there's over 60 events you can attend. She's providing the link for you. Also, Beta NYC Pacific Tech Group is hosting the annual Civic Tech Conference at CUNY School of Law next Saturday with over 35 in-person sessions. You can learn more and register. Uh, thank you so much for attending. Um, yeah, as I was mentioning, uh, Beta NYC and OTI, my agency, will be recruiting more ambassadors in the spring. Let us know if you're interested. And I will go ahead and see if there's an application form that we can send across. Um, I'll try to do it for this call. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I did see the Open Data Ambassador Program. I'll take a look. But um, yeah, so I think we're getting towards the tail end there. Um, let's go ahead and see if you could get to the deck one time, um, Vanessa. There could be some, sure. just some quick things I wanted to talk through, some things that Kate mentioned and just provide the visual with it as well. Um, not oh, towards yeah, the end, but a little bit no, back. let me get back at it. Yeah. Let me go back to questions. We could go forward from there just as, as people are getting ready to Get on with their day. So this is a little bit about how to stay involved, folks. Um, you got a lot of helpful links um, from Kate. Please keep in mind Kate's uh, message. I'm going to go ahead and put a little emoji here because it's super important. But go ahead, Vanessa, one, one time over for me, please. Sure. Yeah, so um, super important. If you can, you got a lot of burning questions. Maybe questions might come up later for you in the day as you think about cool things that you would like to see the city do and hear from my team about nyc.gov ask open data. We got a form here. Took a little quick screenshot of it just to show you what we need. Just a name, email, who you're working with if you're by yourself and how we can help you. There's plenty of ways you can get in touch with my team. Super important because we have a nice service agreement for you to where we promise to try to get you an answer within two weeks. Um, it, by taking the time to write your question out, it really helps us log uh, the ideas and thoughts that you have and be able to get back to it in a uniform way. So super important if you guys can um, reach out to us. If someone to kind of, I can get you to plan to come to you, great. Is there a DDL for the ambassador application? Oh, deadline. Sorry. <laughs> is it a rolling application or is there a deadline? Uh, there will likely be a rolling application. If you can reach yeah. out. Uh, yes, I think Vanessa provided the form that we currently have. Yeah. It's in the chat. If you're interested about mm -hmm. 
interested about being an ambassador, it's in the chat. Vanessa just dropped it. Feel free to open up a tab on your end um, and, and um, take your time to fill it out a little bit later. We're interested to meet new people. Super fun. You get to learn a lot. You get to practice your public speaking. You get to meet a lot of people. It's excellent opportunity for networking. And yes, yeah, so um, thank you for, for being on this slide. Uh, yeah, reach out to my team here on this slide. That's on your screen, folks, if you got any questions, because we'll be able to keep track of them and get you answers. Could you go to the next slide, Vanessa? Sure. Yep. We so we, we, we talked about Open Data Week. You guys know all about it. All next week, today is pretty much the kickoff. Um, next slide. Just a few uh, comments about some other events we could do. If you could bring it in center screen for me, um, Vanessa, I think you might have to just scroll up just a little bit. Yeah, so, yep, we got Open Data Week. You have School of Data at the School of Law, like Kate mentioned. Um, Beta Bagels, where there's talks about uh, government and technology that you can join in on. And uh, the last event at the bottom, Code for America, we also work with them as well, well, at least Beta NYC does. And so you may be able to even get in touch there as well. Can we uh, go to the next slide? Yeah. Yep, and um, so work with Beta NYC, they're available on Slack. They provide newsletters regularly, Facebook and events, right? Like the event that we're talking about at the end of this week at the uh, CUNY School of Law, Saturday, um, you can find out more, beta.nyc forward slash links. You can yep. check all of that out. Take your time. And, and, and I know it's a lot of information, but uh, take your time. Open up those tabs. So you can get back to it at a later time. If you're interested about being an ambassador, we're excited to have you and uh, speak with you later in the year. And uh, next yeah, one. That's, that's why that takeaway sheet that you shared the attendees is really so helpful because yes, everything yes. is we're, in there. We're going to have everything in there in the attendee, attendee sheet as well. I think yeah. some folks had some scheduling conflicts, so maybe they can take this to go ahead and run with, but also um, we'll be sending an attendee sheet that, that had uh, all of this information that we talked about all in one convenient place. Rest assured, you won't lose a thing. Um, you'll have a way to reach out to my team, become an ambassador, all of that. All right, so thank you, everyone. Fantastic. Thank you, Vanessa. yeah. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Every, every lesson is, every presentation is always it's great to meet new people and see all the improvements and updates to open data. Yes, yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kay, for guiding us through for sure. No, thank you for, for thank you for walking us through the content. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, hope to see you all Saturday. Um, get on the open data portal. Practice. Rest assured, yeah. you, you really get there and practice and check things out. We got a lot of cool content from almost every city agency. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, B. Thank you, Biza. Appreciate it. Thank you, Biza. Appreciate you.